Hey, Pat, uh, I just want to ask you about Jalen Waddle because you guys seem pretty close. Just how have you seen him approach this offseason and, and this season with more of an opportunity in front of him? Uh, you know, he been working on his craft, you know, in the offseason. You, know, um, you know, he's going to play a very big role. You know, he's a special player, and we looking forward to competing against each other every day. Tony Sukalis is next. Hey, Pat, we, we talked with uh, Pete Golding the other day, and he, he mentioned you as a lockdown out, outside cornerback. Is that the position that you, you like to play more, the outside cornerback? And then how is the rest of the secondary kind of shaping up, in your opinion? Um, I definitely could see myself play that role. Um, you know, I feel like Pete trusts me in that position. I feel like I got to live up to the expectation. You know, the um, secondary, we've been coming around, you know, well. We've been communicating out there, playing fast. And, you know, I get, uh, we're getting more comfortable as well on the field. Okay, we'll go to Aaron Suttles now. Hey, Pat, I was just given your experience level, does it feel like your secondary now? Have you taken ownership of that, of that unit? Um, most definitely. You know, I, I know I have to play a big role in that leadership role. And, you know, provide the guys, you know, and give them expectation, you know, and come on the field every day, you know, leading them guys and, you know, be that dude where they could look to to um, play play ball, you know. Next, we'll go to Brett Hudson. Uh, hey, Pat, I'm curious what, what you've been able to do to help guys like Jordan Battle and Daniel Wright and Josh Joe, those guys that are – likely to take more playing time than they did last year. What have you done to help those guys and get them up to game speed for the full defensive package rather than some of the, the small packages they may have had access to last year? Um, you know, I, I haven't done much. You know, they those guys are very experienced. You know, they know what's what to expect. You know, they've been around this program for a long time. So, you know, I haven't done much. You know, they know what to do and they know what to expect. But, um, you know, they just bring in the juice to practice every day. That's what helps. Michael Casagrande. Yeah, along those lines, what's the biggest challenge for you as in terms of transitioning from being a younger guy to being the guy who's got to be the leader? What's what's difficult about that or what's the challenge there? Um, you know, you got to expect more from yourself. You know, you got to go out every day and, you know, just come out with the right demeanor and, you know, just leading those guys every day. You know, I'm not a young guy anymore while I'm more of a, on the quiet side. You know, I got speak up more and, you know, deliver my message more. So, you know, I, I live in, I'm living up to that expectation and I'm very, very excited about it. We'll go to Cecil Hurt next. Patrick, hi. Um, Cecil Hurt from the Tuscaloosa News. I know in the off season, you and your father took a close look at, at um, the medical situation and, and what would be best for you. And now that, um, School is back in session, students are back. I, I guess most of your classes are remote, but I was just curious, how comfortable are you on campus and, and have you noticed any difference? Um, I'm very comfortable on campus. You know, most of my classes are online, so I feel comfortable. Um, I'm very comfortable with the protocols um, Alabama has provided us, um, me, myself, and I, you know, and uh, I feel like we have our own personal bubble where we have our where we have our um, own bubble where we don't try to get involved with other stuff around campus, you know, and try to stay involved in our own sanctuary. Okay, we'll go to James Ogletree. Hey, Pat. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Ronald Williams. Coach Golding also talked about him the other night about uh, being in the mix at that star position. Just wanted to, to ask what you've seen from him and your assessment of his game as a guy who's played both outside and star yourself. Uh, Ronald, you know, he's – He's um doing well, you know, he he's um in his playbook, you know, more than ever now. And, you know, he's he's going to play a big role in our defense and we expect him to do big things. So, he's doing well right now. Okay, we'll go to Steven. How you doing, uh Pat? Uh just my thoughts on just your thoughts on Slade Bold and how he's kind of made that big improvement as a route runner. Where have you seen him grow at wide receiver? Um Slade you know he grew t tremendously. You know he's he's obviously a great route runner, but also he understands the game. You know his route concepts are getting better, and he's also you know a very um, 
efficient, you know, route runner, but also he knows in and out of defenses, which makes him even more of a better player. Go to Kirk McNair next. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, there are two, uh, three conferences playing football, including yours, the SEC, and two that aren't. Players discuss that, or does it make you, uh, how do you feel about that? Do you feel good about uh, the SEC playing and think about the others that aren't? Uh, I feel I feel good about it. You know, I mean, I feel comfortable playing. I'm I'm pretty sure everybody else in the SEC feel comfortable playing. You know, uh, and um, I I guess you know everybody else is ready to play. You know, it's not um, uh, to me to decide whether or not they should play or not. So I'm not very concerned on their part. But you know, I feel like we as a team ready to play. So I'm excited for it. A couple more, uh, Mike Rodak, and then we'll finish with Tony. Pat, there's been some pretty high-profile players the last month or so who have chosen not to play this season. You know, Caleb Farley being one at your, at your position from Virginia Tech. Just how much consideration did you give to that this offseason and just what is, is part of the decision-making process there? Um, I wasn't considering it very heavily. You know, I wanted to be out there with my teammates and play this year, you know, because we have a lot to prove this season. Um, and I feel like it was the best for me to play this year, you know, to give – uh, just to give out some extra film and get another opportunity to play with the with the guys. Okay, Tanya, we'll come back to you to finish up. Yeah, hey, hey, Pat. I know I don't know if this affects you that much, but the NCAA passed a, a rule to allow an extra year of eligibility. Um, I guess just from the team standpoint, have you heard uh, you know maybe how, how the players have reacted to that and, and and what their opinions are of that and if it makes them feel any more I guess sure of, of this season. Um, I haven't heard from the player side of things, but I know that um, it grants, you know, players that were supposed to play this year, you know, that gives them another year of eligibility. You know, it gives them a great, you know, concept of things and they could play football further on. So that's all I know. I haven't heard anything from our players yet, but um, I feel like it's a great thing to NCAA what they did.